Do you have what it takes to be successful in AP Biology? In this video, I'm gonna go over 10 skills that you need to be successful in AP Biology this year. Now, whether you're watching this as an AP Bio student or as someone who's thinking about taking AP Biology or somebody who has AP Biology on their plate in the future, hopefully some of these skills are things that you already have and will help you hit the ground running this year. And maybe some of these skills are things that you might wanna brush up on as you're starting the class. But after teaching AP Biology for many years, I know students who come in with these skills already are set up for success both during the course of the year and on the final exam at the end of the year. Of course, during the class, you'll learn lots of things and your teacher will help you develop your skills. But if you already have these things nailed down, you'll have a head start in the class. Let's get started. First up, experimental design. You've probably been over this in science class after science class from middle school onward, but if you don't have a good foundation of things like independent versus dependent variables, what a control is an experiment, how to formulate a good experimental question, how to perform trials and measure things and collect data, all of these things are going to be really important. Now you will go over them again in AP Biology, but guaranteed you will encounter many different experiments that you'll have to analyze or be asked to add ideas to or even do your own labs in the course. On the test at the end of the year, there were several lab-based questions that you're going to have to interpret and answer. So doing your best on these is really dependent on your understanding of how to design an experiment. If you already have a good foundational knowledge of experimental design, you are in a great place. If not, you can refresh on experimental design either before you get to this course or at the start of the year, because usually it's something that teachers cover at the very beginning of the class. Skill number two, basic algebraic math and showing your work. In AP Biology, there is math that you'll have to do beyond just basic algebra and knowing how to rearrange equations and doing a few statistical analyses and maybe some percentages and fractions. The math doesn't get that hard. It's knowing when to apply the equations, which variables to use and how to correctly interpret the results or those numbers that you get from the math. But by knowing how to manipulate numbers at a very basic way and keeping track of all the variables and data that you're using, you'll be better off understanding what these numbers mean in the course. A lot of students get to AP Biology and they practice statistics for the first time or they learn how math can better help them understand a data set. And for them, it really clicks. I've had students tell me, oh, I like math in biology because it actually means something. It's connected to data. So as long as you have a basic understanding of how to rearrange an equation, you should be fine. But that skill of showing your work and keeping track of your variables and your data, that is also very important for the class. And you never know, a lot of times in your class tests or even on the AP Biology exam, you can get credit for just showing your work even if you don't get the full answer correct. Skill number three is graphing. Now, this is sort of related to experimental design because when you conduct an experiment, you're going to want to show your results and a lot of times your data visually through a graph. But knowing which type of graph to use or how to look at a graph and interpret what the graph is saying, find a particular data point on the graph, all of these are skills that are going to be really important in AP Biology. A lot of the questions on tests in your reading on the final exam are going to be based on graphs. Now, as I'm going through these skills, I don't want you to be worried about not knowing how to do this perfectly at the start of the course. You're not taking the AP Bio exam on day one, but if you have a good understanding of how to both read and build a graph on day one, you're going to be ahead of some of your peers in the class and be ready for those more complex and challenging problems later down the road in the course. So freshen up on your graphing skills. I do have a video on that if you'd like to check it out as well. Skill number four. You might have heard of this thing called CER or claim evidence and reasoning or just supporting a claim with scientific evidence and reasoning, or you may have never heard of it at all, and that's okay. But taking a scientific claim, presenting the evidence that supports that claim, and then explaining how that evidence justifies the claim with scientific reasoning from a scientific theory or law or ideas is gonna be really crucial to your success in AP Biology. This is one of the scientific practices that you'll be asked to do again on the final exam. If you've never done CER before, that's okay. And it's a skill you can practice, and it's probably something that you might have done before without even knowing that you were doing it. Again, you'll get time to practice this throughout the year, but if you already have a solid foundation of what a scientific claim, what scientific evidence, and what scientific reasoning is, you are ahead in the course already. Skill number five, visually representing ideas. This can be as simple as sketching out a process or a part of a cell or a diagram on some scratch paper, or it could be creating a diagram within Google Drawings or another software tool. But being able to visually present or explain certain processes or ideas is really key to communicating scientific information, and it's a key skill the AP Biology course. If you're someone who likes to do doodle notes or sketch notes, you're probably already well suited with this skill, 
but I would practice going through your reading and anytime a scientific process like photosynthesis or natural selection comes up, try to practice creating a diagram or a drawing about it, very simple, stick figures are fine, to represent that idea in a different way other than words. When we're conveying information, we wanna be able to present it in several different ways and being able to communicate these ideas visually is one of our key scientific practices for the course. All right, now we're getting into the skills that are a little bit softer or things that could apply really to any AP class or exam, but if you have a head start in these things, you'll be way ahead of your peers in the course. All right, memorization. Yes, AP Biology's curriculum is tough and there are a lot of key terms and vocab words to memorize. It's nearly not as much as it used to be. They actually condensed down the curriculum and cut out lots and lots of stuff like a variety of human body systems and plant hormones and how neurons work but you still need to know a lot of information and a lot of vocab. So being able to memorize key facts to be able to support your scientific explanations and reasonings later down the road when you're answering these questions about experiments, you're gonna need to memorize these words and terms and ideas. So get on those memorization skills, make sure you work on flashcards, make sure you work on your mnemonics or your other memorization tricks. I do have a video on those as well. But if you are someone who struggles a little bit with memorization, this may be a skill that you wanna brush up on before you start your AP Biology course. Reading is our next one, and specifically reading speed with scientific text. Students who are slow readers often struggle the most in AP Biology at the start of the year. If you are able to read quickly and understand and synthesize information from a scientific textbook, you will be able to move through the work faster and hopefully take in more information more efficiently and more quickly than other students in your class. The more quickly you can get through your reading and understand it, the more quickly you can get to your practice problems or other active studying methods or have time for all the homework you need to do for your class. So being able to read quickly will be essential for your homework, for activities in class, and for the AP Biology exam at the end of the year. And there is just a lot of reading. Some students can't even get to it all because they are slow readers. So if you are somebody who needs to work on your reading speed as you're going into AP Biology, just read. It can really be anything. Start with stuff that you enjoy reading, fiction books, blogs, articles online, and then ramp it up a little bit to more scientific text, things that are nonfiction, things that are information based. Again, this could be articles online, start reading science news sites. But the more you read, the faster your reading speed will be. It will help you out if you are a little bit faster. All right, next up, note taking, which I also have a video on. So being able to take good notes is super key because you're gonna be presented with a lot of information that you will later be asked to memorize in class, in your homework. Next up, organization and time management. This is key. Obviously, a lot of the work you'll have to do in AP Biology will take a lot of your time. And so being able to manage your time well is something that a lot of AP students say is one of the most important factors to dictate their success in the class. If you are able to fit more time during the day and little pockets of time here and there to get a little bit of work done, a few practice problems here, study a few flashcards there, you will be better off in your class throughout the entire year. And lastly, perseverance. At some point in the class, you will encounter things that are hard, problems that are challenging, a test that you didn't do as well on as you thought you would, even though you worked really hard and you studied for it, or you thought you knew the information. Perseverance will help you keep going in these tough moments and look for solutions to problems that you encounter. If you're not doing as well in the class as you thought or you hoped you would, you can use perseverance to help you talk to your friends, talk to your teacher, and find solutions to your struggles. You will encounter challenges in this class, that is certain, 100%. But the students who persevere and take the time and effort to keep going will be the ones who succeed. What other skills do you think it takes to be successful in AP Biology? in the course and on the exam. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.